Hi, friends, and welcome to this Scholarships Crash Course with our very special guest, Amanda Miller, one of my favorite friends and folks and colleagues in this whole college admissions landscape. Thanks for being here, Amanda. How you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm always glad to have you, and I'm so grateful for your time. Um, we I asked a check-in question on the chat, uh, which is, what is your least favorite holiday song? What is the song that, if it disappeared from all space and time, you'd be okay with it. Feel free to let us know in the chat. Um, or if you're watching this on YouTube later, you can add in the comments. We've got a lot of Alvin and the Chipmunks and Mariah happening in the chat so far. So uh, Amanda, I'm going to turn this over to you and let, let let you know, what are we, what are we up to today? What's our, what are we, what are we even talking about? <laughs> uh, we're talking about scholarships and uh, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about with people. Like I'm one of those I'll, I'll meet someone in the elevator and they find out what I do, what I do for a living. And all of a sudden we're talking about scholarships. So this is a crash course of scholarships. I, as Ethan knows, I would happily keep you all here till midnight talking about scholarships, but we're going to, we're going to stick. I'm going to stick to my time tonight, Ethan. I am going to get it done in under That's 60 good. minutes. No 78 <laughs> slides this time. It'll be great. Um, okay. So here's my question for you. How often, so I see there are likely a lot of students uh, or a lot of parents on the call. How often do kids clean up their rooms without being asked? You don't have to put it in the chat. I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old. Um, and my answer to this is about as often as they apply for scholarships without being handed the application and so reminded good. a few times about the deadline. So, so I just want to start with something familiar to us all, uh, which is the idea of applying for scholarships is a lot like cleaning house. This is my thesis, Ethan. Applying for scholarships is a lot like cleaning house. Everyone agrees it should be done. Like you should apply for, that's what you're supposed to do. Finding time to do it can kind of be a challenge. And then working together, having the right tools and a plan, make it go way, way easier and way better for everyone involved. So all this means that like applying for scholarships is kind of, at one time it seems simple, just like saying clean the house, but like in another way, it's like, no, there's a lot of components to it and you've got to have that motivation and it can just be a source of confusion and frustration. So. Let's fix that. That's that's our goal this evening is to to uh, answer several questions and we're going to dice it up a certain way. So here's uh, you can put this in the chat. Here are the questions that I'm hoping well I will be answering tonight and well as many more. So of these seven questions in the chat, put the number for the one that you're like most excited to know the answer to. And Ethan, if you want to like keep an eye on the chat, let me know what people say. But how, how many scholarships do I apply for? Where do I find the ones? What should I have on hand to make it easier, less time consuming? When's the best time to apply? How realistic is it? What about full rides? And what do people do differently? Let me see in the chat, what do you got? Two so far, lots two. of votes for two. I think uh, four, I'm seeing votes for four. Mm. I'm still, like, if I had to say, Two, four, five, seven. There are two, four, five, seven. There. All right. Where do I find them? When do I apply? How realistic is it? And what do people want to? Good, excellent. Okay, fantastic. So I will slow down and spend a little bit more time on those. That's where I find them is most often the the most uh, uh, frequently asked question. I guess where are they? Everyone says they're out there, Ethan. These millions of dollars in scholarships that don't get applied for every year. Where are they? We're going to talk about that. So I've divvied tonight up very, very simply, no 20 point plan here, just planning to win scholarships, finding scholarships you can win and applying for scholarships like winners, like a winners. Oh no, typo. This is why you edit. Uh, like, a winner. I like, a, I, like a uh, winner. Like a winner. It's just an Italian accent. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. And then we'll have time for Q and A. So whatever time I don't suck up, uh, soak up, um, have your questions ready and on the top of your mind for for that point okay so part one let's talk about planning to win scholarships first thing i tell folks when we sat we sit down to discuss applying for scholarships is the idea of being reasonable so why do i say be reasonable well success, successful scholarship shippers usually have one or more of the following things uh going for them they either have great academics grades test scores etc an amazing talent of some kind, whether that's speaking, writing, athletics. Um, they have a unique set of qualities. Sometimes just being you has a scholarship attached to it, whether that's um, where you're from, your life history, your parents' circumstances. Sometimes there's a scholarship just for that. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then 
lots of time and determination. So if you're thinking to yourself, I don't have the greatest grades or the most amazing talent, and I'm not really sure that I'm unique. If you have lots of time and determination, that's that's enough to get somewhere. That's, that's a good starting point. Um, two quick things I wanna note here before we move on. There are schools, um, and I'm thinking of three or four of them in my area, where um, they give out scholarships like Halloween candy. Like I'm imagining throwing from the holiday parade, the candy pelting children with candy. Um, it's congratulations, you got in, you have a pulse, here's a $20,000 scholarship. So those are scholarships, I'm not really gonna focus on those much because that's more of discounting tuition and that's happening more and more. So when you see those ridiculous sticker prices for a private college, know that the average discount rate for a lot of them is 52%. So those are great. Those are automatic scholarships, but those aren't really what I'm focusing on. Um, the other is, um, the other thing I wanna mention is need. If you're thinking to yourself, um, I don't have these things, but I really need money for college. Like I have lots of time and determination, um, but I need money. Really the other basket of money you're looking at is grants. We're not gonna get into that tonight because I could spend a whole other presentation talking about FAFSA and CSS profile and schools that meet a lot of need. Just know that if you're thinking to yourself, maybe I'm not, you know, someone that, you know, caught that a, um, has a lot of academic merit going for me then need is where you need to look. And there are other ways of doing it. Grant aid is just like merit aid. Merit aid is scholarships. Um, just grant aid is just because you need it, not because of anything in particular. Okay. Um, setting specific and reasonable goals. So here's some frequently asked questions I get. Um, so we're gonna talk about some of these. Um, what's the ideal timeline of applying for scholarships? Right now, until the student graduates college, they could apply for scholarships. I mean, there are scholarships for, you know, starting in sixth grade, but to be more reasonable, the biggest and most impactful window is September through April of senior year. That's where most of it is. Now, it depends on the types of scholarships you're pursuing when the window shifts, and it can also depend on the area you live. We're going to talk about that more. Um, and then how realistic is it to actually win a scholarship? Well, that depends on the applicant and the type of scholarship. You can see there's a pattern going here. The type of scholarship really matters. And then how many scholarships should I apply for? Ideally, as many as you can, but if we're gonna put a number to it, I tell families that they should be applying for however much they think they need times five. So if you say I need $20,000, apply for a hundred. If you need a hundred thousand dollars, you're applying for half a million dollars in scholarships. Um, but more specifically, and this is where we're getting into types, students should apply for all of the institutional and local scholarships that they possibly are eligible for. That's where they should start. And then private, as many as you can. So let's let's pull these apart. There's these three kinds of scholarships. There's these three types. They are distinct and they're depending on the student, there's specific ones you should go for because that's gonna be your better bet. So the first kind is institutional scholarships. These are scholarships provided by the colleges themselves. So think of any college you're gonna go to, it's money that the college has that it's giving to students. And then local scholarships, these are the ones like your local Rotary Club or your, your church or you know the bank or just places in the local community or regional community that are limited to students who live in that area. And then private outside online scholarships, they're called different things, but that's the wild, wild west of scholarships. That's everything else. That's the, I'm a blonde valedictorian from Tennessee and I want to make a scholarship, so I do. It's he who has the gold makes the rules. So it's could be for anything. It could be make a prom dress out of duct tape, win $10,000. It could be the Coca-Cola one. Or if any of you watch the football game with the um, Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway where they throw the footballs into the Coca-Cola can, it could be anything. So that's, that's really where there's a lot of diversity. Um, okay, institutional scholarships. This is where the most money is. Absolutely. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One is it's just dollar amounts, just, you know, we're talking about $10,000, you know, as a, as an institutional scholarship, as opposed to like a thousand dollar scholarship, they can have thousand dollar ones. They vary. But, um, the main reason this is the most money is because it's renewable local scholarships and private scholarships for the most part are one shots institutional. If you get it freshman year and you maintain what's called satisfactory academic progress, you keep your grades up you get it every year. So whatever amount you're offered, multiply it by four. And that's why there's so much money here. Um, it depends on your college list. Some colleges are very generous with institutional merit aid. Some colleges are not. I will give you two resources if we can add them to the chat, please, our lovely moderator. Um, one is the um, Jeff Salingo's buyers and sellers list. That's a great resource. Um, 
for it's more of a scattergram than a list but he does have a list feature um it shows which colleges are buyers like they are going to give students lots of money to entice them to come to their school and which ones are sellers where they're saying you if you don't want to pay the full tuition or whatever we ask you to pay there's 1500 people behind you who would pay it so it just depends so that's part of it and then it can also and a second or secondary resource is um jenny and jeff's big j consulting um uh financial aid resource where they lay out how generous different schools are like what percentage of non-need students are getting merit aid and how much and if we have time at the end and people are interested i can pull those up and we can look at them um can you write the name of those in the comments sure you got that ethan we got it you want me to do it no no no. i got it okay thank you so you jenny it. and jeff big j consulting and then the other one is jeff Slingo's buyers and sellers and then um these can be competitive and limited so you know, if you ask college if they have scholarships, every single one of them is going to say, oh, not every single one. Most of them are going to say yes, but they can be limited to a handful of students. Um, so it can, it can depend. Um, and then they're on the college's website. So where to look for them would be on the college's website. Sometimes Some colleges are much better than others about expressly, you know, telling how much that you're going to get. Um, I'll use a couple examples like University of Wyoming, super clear, like, what's your GPA? What's your test score? Boom. This is how much you're going to get. Um, they have a nice little chart. Uh, other schools will list approximations like University of South Carolina. They'll say, you know, students who have between these ranges with GPA and test scores, you're going to get about this much in aid, but it's a holistic process. And then some schools will have um, just endowed scholarships where they'll list the scholarships, but they don't tell you how to go about applying for them or where the application is. And that could be for a couple of reasons. Um, for some schools, your scholarship application, your college application is your scholarship application. So those lovely essays that you write with Ethan, <laughs> those can be used to assess, wow, this is a kid we want our campus and we want to put them in this, you know, this section for our honors college or for the specific scholarship. Okay, local scholarships. These ones are the ones that are smaller amounts. The median amount is about $1,000. The highest one in my area is about 10,000, but I've heard of bigger ones in different areas. Again, it depends on where you live. They're easy applications. They, they're they most of the time so simple to do. The problem is that the timeline doesn't work out because um, they are in April when seniors are less inclined to do the applications. <laughs> um, Competition is very limited. It's the people who live in your area um, and sometimes even just your high school or your county. And then these are through your high school's counseling office or your state um, um, higher ed website. So my state, North Carolina, where I live, we have the um, College Foundation of North Carolina. Maryland has the Maryland Higher Education Council. So it just depends. Um, I there if you google the name of your your state and then higher education or you know scholarships, you can usually get to the site pretty easily. And then for private scholarships, these ones are very time consuming to find. Unlike institutional scholarships where you find them on the college's website, and if you've searched the entire website and you've called the financial aid office, you know what they have. And local ones where if you've gone through your high school counseling office, you pretty much know everything you have. These ones are everywhere. It's like a bottomless pit of, of scholarships. And the thing is, most of them don't apply to you. I actually um, uh, have taught a discrete mathematics course and one of the assignments I had them do um, to, to uh, to talk about data science and data cleaning things was they had to manually go through a list of a thousand scholarships and see how many they actually could apply to. And usually it's about a dozen. So it's very, it's very hard to find them. Um, availability can vary. Um, and most of them are single shot awards. Most of them are, you get this one time you go for it. That's not always the case. There are a number of scholarship programs. I'm thinking like ones that are connected to colleges like Questbridge or Golden Door or Jack Kent Cut, where they have a need component. Students with high need can be eligible. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of the other merit awards are usually single shot. For a second. Um, so of the three types, um, who should be looking at each one? So for institutional scholarships, if you're applying to a college and you're happy to get in by the skin of your teeth, expecting to get a scholarship there, unless it's one with built-in like tiers, probably not so much. It's more of an institution where your student would be in the top 15% of applicants. So maybe they could get into a, a highly rejective college, but instead they opt to uh, apply and go to a school that 
they're in the higher tier of applicants. Um, they can have a talent or a quality scholarship. So it could be athletics, it could be um, a writing scholarship or an art scholarship. My sister got a vocal scholarship. Um, and it could be some sort of quality, some aspect of we're looking for women in STEM and of our women in STEM, you're someone we would like to give a scholarship to. And then if you're applying to colleges that have that generous merit aid, some institutions don't really give merit aid um, because they don't need to because people are, are enticed without it. Um, when you're gonna be applying to these, senior fall through senior winter, um, there are three ways by which you can apply to institutional scholarships. The first way is um, it's done automatically and that your college application is submitted and then they say, oh, you have won the scholarship. Fantastic. Um, the thing to be aware of there is if you don't indicate a quality on your application, you may not get that award. I'll give a, a random example. Mars Hill University has a Baptist scholarship. If you don't mark your religious affiliation as Baptist on the application, they don't know to put you in that bucket. So just be aware there. Um, the second way they do it is by invitation. So they could invite you. We see your application. It's beautiful. Please, we invite you to come to our invite you. We see your application. It's beautiful. Ooh, somebody turned off their mute. Um, and uh, when they do that, then they're inviting you to a scholarship weekend to interview. Okay. The third way that they will award money is by a separate application. So a separate application could happen um, like the case of App State, where you have your early action admissions deadline November 1st, and then your scholarship application is due November 15th. So if you don't apply by the early action deadline, you can't access the scholarship application. So that's something to be aware of. Or it could be after you're accepted. So with that November 15th example, students are applying for scholarships not even knowing if they got in. Uh, on the other end, with knowing you got in would be like UNC Charlotte. You've uh, applied you know, gotten in. And then after you've been admitted, they open the scholarship portal where then you can apply for scholarships. So that's, that's how those work. Okay. Local scholarships. Um, students with financial need, not all local scholarships have an element of financial need, but I found quite a few do. Um, and then good academics, but you don't have to have stellar academics for a lot of local scholarships. A lot of them have a, a minimum GPA of a 3.0 or a 3.5. And then the key thing is being, being willing to write essays and complete applications. Don't succumb to senioritis, seniors. Please actually do them because what happens is you get to senior award night and the same kid gets up five times because the only one who wrote the essays. So just just be aware. We had a, a, a BB&T scholarship um, worth $5,000 and all you had to do was have a, I think a 3.0 and participate in activities. We had three applications. So local scholarships, that's where it's limited to your high school, your area, just you gotta be willing to do it. So most of the time, this is senior winter and into spring. Some, some local entities, some high schools have scholarships in the fall, but most of the time it's like January through April. This is where your colleges or your high school's counseling office is the way to go. Usually they'll post through Naviance or SCORE, but they could post it on the counseling website as well. And continually check because they could they update as they get them. They have to wait for the, the applications from the local organizations. So check about every two or three weeks starting in January, just to make sure that you've got most up-to-date ones you can. All right, and then private ones. Um, people who have lots of time, they have a team of people, whether that's a parent, a mentor, a coach, somebody who's gonna help them and they're gonna persist. It helps to have a writing ability because a lot of scholarships do have some writing component. Um, and this is never ending. There's not really a set deadline. There, a lot of them are for senior specific, but not all of them. They, there's a lot of scholarships that are for juniors, underclassmen, but also for um, people who are, are currently in college. But senior year is the biggest, the biggest bulk of them. Okay. Questions, Ethan, comments? Give me a chance to breathe for a second. I know it's like drinking I mean, from a fire. There are a bunch, room. but I think let's do the content and then we'll get into the questions because okay, that'll it. be clearer for folks. And then and then if folks who are like wanting to not stay for the QA can go early. So um okay. yeah, keep flowing. You're doing great. Got it. And I'm right, and I'm so by the way, what... I'm like in there snipe, you know, sniping, trying to get some of the questions answered so that we've got more <laughs> at the end. So I'm, Appreciate I'm it. yeah. So um what I would tell folks is when you're making your plan to win scholarships, get specific. So just like our analogy of cleaning the house, there's always more that can be done. You need to define the scope of what qualifies as success, or you're just going to feel like, you know, hamster on a wheel. So 
you can set a set a statement, set something specific. I will apply for all the scholarships I can. Well, that's commendable. But my question would be like, when are you going to do this? And which scholarships? Same thing as saying, I will apply to 10 scholarships during my senior year. That's, that's more specific. But like, by when? Because if you wait until April, all the money was back in like November. So just being aware. So, so saying something like this. By December 1st of my senior year, I have applied to all institutional scholarships I'm able to, as well as outside scholarships, totaling a quarter of a million dollars. Beginning September, I'll check with my school counselor monthly for any local scholarships. This is like, that's an ambitious plan, but it's really specific. So this is excellent. So what I would challenge you all to do is to be that specific, be that intentional. So pro tip here, finding time can be hard, especially senior year. Hopefully you will have done your essays over the summer and that will be not a stressor, but it can be hard. So you have two choices really, either set aside time. So example, set aside Saturday mornings, go to your favorite coffee shop and just sit there for an hour and a half, enjoy your, your espresso and just search for scholarships. Um, the other would be to replace routine. So what do I mean by that? Um, get a schol Scholarly is an app that some students like. Going Mary is a website that a lot of students like, have the webpage permanently open and then just in lieu of going on TikTok or whatever, set a time to set aside time aside time to do that. So set a timer for 20 minutes and then go to TikTok or Facebook. Just or attach it to a habit that you already have, like taking a walk or waiting for the bus. A lot of people, what I've noticed over the decade that I've been doing this is that a lot of students say, I just need the right time to sit down and for like eight hours look for for scholarships. And that's not really how. I've seen students be successful. It's more akin to going to the gym. You don't just go to the gym for eight hours on a Saturday and say, I'm good for the week. Like that's not really helpful or ideal. It's more of just taking time as you go. Like I've got 20 minutes, let me do, see what I can do. And just filling it in where you can. Otherwise it, you just get to the end of the senior year and it just hasn't happened. Okay, so I'd like you guys to take a moment and think about which type of scholarship, institutional, local or private, you're going to focus on first. So which one are you going to focus on first? You can put it in the chat or you can just write it down for yourself. Like which type of scholarship is where you're at in this process? Local, institutional, private. See, and everybody's answers, I love the diversity of these answers because it, everyone's answer should be different because it depends on where you are. That's fantastic. I love it. So what I would do, say now is just take a moment write down your goal. So if you're a student, your own goal, if you're a parent, a goal you might want to chat with your student about, like what their goal is. What is the goal? Like, is the goal to apply for all of them, to apply for 10 of them, to just, I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to just think about that, what your goal is. You can put it in the chat if you're feeling bold, or you can just write it down. Oh, congratulations on the interview for Stamps. Stamps is a, a top tier scholarship that a lot of different institutions have. So it's a great one. Scholarship for talent, excellent. And I will say, you know, it's not an all or nothing. Like I need to get this one scholarship and it's gonna take care of everything. We'll talk about full rides in a second. It's most of the time when people are successful with scholarships it's they're cobbling together a number of different things to make it work. Okay. So let's talk about finding. This was everyone's favorite topic. Part two, finding scholarships to win. So freaking last question, where are all the scholarships I'm eligible for? Well, we've talked about the three kinds and a little bit of where they are. So let's just reiterate that. The first place you should look is on the college's website. If you haven't done that, that is the starting point because that is where the most money is. Um, next would be your counselor's office or the college or the high school website. Those would be lovely places. Your state's higher ed website. And in fact, um, I'm going to put in the chat real quick. Actually, um, yeah, I can, let's see. The National Association of Federal Student Aid Administrators, state aid. So if you Google, I put the acronym in the chat, NASFA, <laughs> NAFSA, state aid. Um, it should take you to a lovely website and it um, it's, it's a little bit antiquated, but it has a map on it. You can click on your individual state and then it should you should be able to get quickly to your state's uh, higher ed website. So that's just another thing. So just Google that. You should be able to, to get where you need to be. And then any organization or company you're affiliated with. So if you're affiliated with the military, you should absolutely know about the Yellow Ribbon scholars Scholarships. Um, if you um, are uh, a uh, 
Rotarian, you don't have to be a Rotarian affiliated, like if any, any organization, I, I know that like, um, there's teachers, um, associations and things like that. Um, if your employer gives benefits to dependents, all that counts. Those are more circumstantial, but that's a great place to start. And then they're hiding online. And I say they're hiding, like your best, honestly, everyone asks what my favorite scholarship website is. And the answer is Google. Um, <laughs> Because um, you can sign up for things like FastWeb or um, any number of different scholarship websites. But honestly, you don't need to have a membership there. Once you've found a scholarship, you can just copy and paste the name of it into Google and you can find where the website it's hosted on. So I, I Google is the number one. If you really do want to find and double down on finding um, private scholarships, they do have um, every year they print a new Ultimate Scholarships book. Um, it's on Amazon. It's like 35 bucks or pro tip. You can go to your local library and they should have it for you. And if not, they can interlibrary loan it for you. Um, and it's entire book of just scholarships by category, scholarships for native Americans, scholarships for STEM majors, scholarships for people who live in Idaho. So if you're more analog, that's another option. Okay. So take down a moment, take a moment to jot down where you're going to look first. And I'll flip back a slide so you can have your options laid out for you. Where are you going to look first? Maybe you're going to have like second or third, but like, what's the first place? As soon as you're off this, this webinar, you're like, okay, I'm going to go check this out. Where are y'all heading? College website, name of the book. Um, let's see. The one I use when I have, when I have it is the ultimate, uh, scholarship guide. And it usually has the year on it. So 2024 should be out. And then the other website was the NAFSA state aid. Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. You guys are so helpful. That's what I love about this community, Ethan. Just We're like everyone's in it together. <laughs> I got you, says Jennifer. I love it. Um, okay, fantastic. Okay, so other frequently asked question. How do people get full rides? This one, people didn't have as much interest, but I'm, I'm going to chat really quick, briefly about it. Um, there's a few ways that people get, quote, full rides. And there's a reason there's quotes around this. Um, a lot of times, like I could talk about getting a, a full ride at Davidson, my alma mater, but it wasn't a scholarship. It was grants. So if you have really high need at a highly rejective school, a school with below a 20% admission rate, um, actually what you're getting is grants most of the time. Not all the time. There is like the Belk scholarship and different things like, like I could have gotten, but like that, that's usually what's going on there. Um, another one, like if your student is a national merit scholar, there are certain institutions, Alabama, one of them in Oklahoma, that will give a full ride if you're a national merit scholar. But like, you know, how many kids does that apply to? But if it's your kid and they really want to go to Alabama, you've struck gold. Um, if you have exceptional talent, like if you're a division one star athlete, um, because just because it's division or one or two, that means they can give scholarships, but does every athlete get a scholarship? No. And the NCAA website has so many resources about what the reality of, of athletic scholarships are. Um, one of my favorite ways that people get really big money is by choosing to be a big fish in a small pond and interviewing well. So I give the example of a student who got into Chapel Hill and Gardner Webb. Chapel Hill, pretty much everyone's heard of. Gardner Webb is the small one in Boiling Springs, North Carolina. Um, she got into both Chapel Hill. She was, you know, one of many, but Gardner Webb gave her an amazing financial aid package, like rolled out the red, red carpet for her. So the, it's a choice at that point of like what you want to do. And then win the scholarship lottery. Okay, so what I mean by this is that's the, the Coca-Cola scholarship or the Dr. Pepper tuition challenge or um, <clears throat> college board has a number of scholarships and they pick an ultimate winner who I think gets $40,000. Like there are scholarships that are open to most people that you can apply to. Your odds, not that great. It's many, many if you've heard of the scholarship, many other people probably have too. But that's not to say that you you can't go forward with it. So again, that's where those high need programs can be can be helpful. Again, Questbridge, Posse, Jack Kent Cut, Bonner Scholars. Um, there's a number of programs that can that can help. Okay, some pro tips here, and I put this in green because this is this is the money page. This is where if you have stuck with me to this point, this is where it's about to pay off really big. Of here's how people actually find scholarships that apply to them. One is before they even start, I have them create a noun list. So what do I mean by that? Rather than just opening up a scholarship website and scrolling until you find something that applies to you, be more strategic. So this is what I did with my students who had that giant list of scholarships they had to pull through. I said, why don't you just focus on one element of yourself 
that probably doesn't apply to most of the people in your high school or most of the people in the country. So is it that you're a dance major? Is it that you live in Idaho? What is it? And make a list of all of those nouns. So resident of Idaho, um, you know, uh, uh, Vietnamese American, um, horticultural major, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be that, you know, narrow. It could be North Carolina residents, engineering major, female, whatever. Make your list of nouns and then make your way through this now. So each time you sit down to look for scholarships, you're like, this is my noun of the day. I'm gonna find all of the political science major uh, scholarships I can today. That's my goal. And that way it's, and if you stumble across something else while you're doing it, great. But like, that's the goal. And that narrows the scope and makes it easier to digest rather than just feeling like you're hit with a tidal wave of scholarship information. Next thing I would say is assembly line. So I see a lot of you on here are likely parents, maybe not all of you, but a lot of you are. Um, the the families I found that are very successful with scholarships form an assembly line. It takes just as much time to find the scholarships as it does to do them. So the parent will say, student, you know, child, I love you. Can I go find scholarships? And if I find them for you and give them to you, would you be willing to do them? And so they they're like, thank you. Like, you know, ideal world. Thank you. Like that would be really helpful. Only they say that to me because I'm their counselor and not usually the parent. So don't take it personally. Anyway, so but but yes, the student parent finds the scholarship and then passes it to the student. So the student isn't tasked with double work of like finding and applying. It just it streamlines it. Um to aid this, I would say have a shared Google Sheets document. You can do a, a Google Doc if you work if you prefer, but I like Sheet because like you've got the cells and that way you have like things, specific things to fill in, like the name of the scholarship, the deadline of the scholarship, the um, amount of the scholarship, and crucially, and I cannot stress this enough, the link where you found the scholarship, or you will never find it again. So just putting that, and I like this because you can bank scholarships, like, oh, this one's not open yet, or whatever. And you can just like bank them in this like repository and you can do it asynchronously. You're finding them. And then while your kids, you know, at school and then you switch and they, they can click one that they are going to apply for and they can do it without you sitting there. So just that way it's, it's building some independence and empowerment, but you guys don't have to be sitting next to each other. Um, and then the other thing I would say is apply as you go. So many students wait until they found all the scholarships and then they're going to start applying. I would say, for every 10 scholarships you find that actually apply to you, stop and like apply to one that you can. Um, just pick the one that is the best shot, the best fit, do that one, and then proceed rather than finding 100 of scholarships and then run out of time and not apply to any. Just make sure that you fold it in. Plus, it breaks up the monotony a little bit. Okay, part three, applying like a winner. I love this section. Okay, so you've done the hard work. You've set your goals. You have achieved your goal of finding these scholarships. You've worked so hard. Now that you have them, how do you actually win them? <laughs> so this is, there are really only two questions here. So what should I have on hand to make applying to scholarships easier and less time consuming? Here are the things you should have on hand. And it's just, in a, it can be analog in an actual folder or digitally, whichever, but you need to have them on hand. Um, a document with all your essays and supplements. And the reason I say put them all of them on one one document and just copy and paste them over if you're there on disparate ones is because you can use the control F function. So say you're given a scholarship question about leadership, control F, leadership. Let me find that prompt without having to go through 15 documents. Like it's just all there. Um, and then uh, resume, not every application will ask for a resume, but for those that give the option, sometimes they'll say list your activities or attach a resume. It's just so nice to just put, please see attached resume, staple and move on rather than having to write them out every time. Um, also, if your student's like blanking, like what did I do that relates to this? It's a nice like reminder sheet of here are the things that you've done. And then a copy of the transcript, not every uh, scholarship will require this, but having a copy on hand is helpful because sometimes it'll say, uh, we want you to be in the top 10% and you're not sure if you're in the top 10% and you can go and look. Um, some scholarships will require an official transcript, that's fine, but just having a copy of your transcript can be helpful. And then spare letters of recommendation. So if you have someone who's written you a letter of recommendation, you can have an extra copy, it's just on hand. Do not do, what uh, one of my dear seniors did to me uh, a few years ago, which is uh, 
email me at, at 445 asking for a letter of recommendation by 5 p.m. because he had to drive it to where it was due. I was like, no, no, don't do that. Womp womp. Do the that's, trombone hunt. <laughs> yeah. That's not, I, I, I explained to him, I said, you're very lucky that I already have one on file. I'm not going to tweak it other than to change the who it's to. Here you go. I, if you give me time, I would have aligned it to like the values of the scholarship. But yeah, don't don't do that. Yes. Um, and then that Google spreadsheet, I cannot stress enough how helpful that is to just keep track of like, okay, which ones have I done? Because you can create a like, which scholarships I have. And then on a separate worksheet, you can have the, you know, name of the scholarship. Does it require a transcript? Does it require a letter of rec? Does it require, and you can kind of have, it depends on how much you like spreadsheets. You do it your own way of organization. I just like spreadsheets. Okay. Other key, key, key question here is what do folks who win scholarships do differently. And some of these are, you're gonna say, really? And some of these you're gonna say, oh, that's it? Anyway, so focus on best fit over award amounts. So rather than going for that $10,000 into your email here to win kind of scholarship, you're welcome to do those. But I would say focus on something that's highly specific to you, even if it's for a lesser amount. So um, I, like if you're a student I'm working with and you are Hispanic and looking into engineering, there is a North Carolina Hispanic STEM like fund. Okay, that's really specific. Let's go there versus the Coca-Cola scholarship. All right, enlist help and reach out. Um, students, you do not have to do this alone. Parents, you do not have to do this alone. Um, so students should reach out and let their teachers, mentors know that they're actively pursuing so that's in the back of their minds because you'll be amazed at the number of times something will come through our inboxes and we'll go, oh, I should tell this student about it. So just letting them know that they're what they're looking for. And that's where that noun list comes into play. Like I'm looking for STEM uh, scholarships or I'm looking for, you know, scholarships for, um, for public speaking. Like I'm happy to public speak. The other one, and I love this, is doing verbal jujitsu. Um, with nosy neighbors, or, you know, if your student has a job, customers, students on this call, how many times are you asked, well, what are you doing next year? Where are you going to college? What are you going to do? And the appropriate response at this point should probably be something like, yeah, I'm still weighing my options. I'm waiting till I get my award letters in the spring, which are delayed because of FAFSA. And I'll, I'll decide then. But right now, what I'm really doing is looking for scholarships. Would you happen to know of any? And then the pressure's off you, and you've asked this person, and they may not think of one right away, but they will, They could reach out to you, especially the, the neighbor scenario. They could reach out to you and be like, oh, I totally thought of this scholarship that so-and-so got that might apply to you. Um, it does help. Um, you can also reach out. So especially if your focus is uh, local scholarships, but even if it's institutional and reaching out to the institution, you could look at if you've ever looked, uh, gone into a city and like seen the sign with like the Lions Club, the Kiwanis Club, all the like different signs on there, those are people you could find out who their philanthropic chair is or who you could contact there, reach out and say, hey, do you all offer scholarships? Don't do it in April when you really, really need one. But like, you know, now or as a junior, I've had juniors do this and Lo and behold, the, the person says, oh, we totally should have a scholarship. The next year, the student applies for the scholarship and wins it. It's kind of like printing your own money. So, so just reaching out uh, to the different institutions, different organizations, you know, churches, synagogues, wherever, whatever's in your community to see what options they have. And then persist and stay organized. Um, you're going to go through a lot of hitting brick wall of just for every hundred things you look at, maybe one applies to you just know that that's not, it's not you. It's just part of the nature of what this is. And then stay organized, keep track of everything as you go. Um, submit application early. So uh, I've been on the um, committee for a couple local scholarships. And yeah, we notice, we notice the kid who slides it in right at like 12, like 11.59 when it's due versus the kid who had it done three days early. We notice things like that. So just be aware for big, big scholarships that may not be the case, like with many thousands of applicants, but for smaller scholarships where we have like mm, 24 applicants or so, yeah, we notice. Um, students who win scholarships give their best effort. So what I mean by this is they read carefully. Every year on those local scholarship boards, we have students who turn in incomplete applications because they didn't read the fine print um, or they turn in something other than what we asked for. 
most of the time we try to be generous and help them out, but there are a number, I've talked to a number of counselors in, you know, California, Massachusetts, different places. They're like, no, if it's incomplete, you know, if it's missing that one thing, that's one reason to take them off the list. So just read very, very carefully and make it neat. I kid you not, I have had students turn in local scholarships done in purple crayon. Do not do that. <laughs> like, make it like when you're submitting something digitally, try to make it one nice PDF file. That would be really nice. We appreciate that. Um, and along with giving your best effort, when you're students, when you're given these, these prompts, like, why do you need the scholarship or how do you envision um, using this, the funds from the scholarship, give specific and enthusiastic answers. The more specific you are, the better. I'll never forget a student who was inter uh, doing an interview and we asked him about like his aspirations for the summer. And he said, well, I recently read a book on, on Sherpas and I really think it'd be fascinating to connect and get a pen pal, um, someone like who is like helps these mountaineers and like learn more about what they need. And I, I think I understand that they don't have healthcare. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Like, what is, that's so neat. Like, that's so specific. That's going to stand out rather than I want to make my dreams come true. Um, like, what are those dreams? Um, I see hand raised. I'll be with you real quick. Um, and then Final, final thing here is recycle essays and letters of recommendation. You do not need to write a brand new essay or come up with a brand new story every single time. A lot of times the scholarship person has never seen your college application. Take all that work you've put into those essays and just revamp it to make it fit the prompt. If it's the exact same prompt, you can copy and paste. If it's not, make sure you're making it fit. Same with letters of recommendation. Teachers don't need to write a whole new one. They can just recycle ones they have. And then actually apply. Um, students have the best of intentions. I can't stress this enough. They have the best of intentions, but then it just senior year gets away from them and they look up and their financial aid awards in front of them and they're $20,000 short. And they're saying, okay, I'm ready to apply for scholarships now. And that's the scholarships are almost over at that point. So apply, apply early. Okay. Now it is time for Q and A. How do I do on time? Oh. You crushed it. You did all the things. We've got so much time. <laughs> Um, as we transition to q and I want to share a, a, yet a few more resources and tell you all about a cool session we've got happening tomorrow. Let me just share my screen real quick. We've got Tom who's hopped in to answer some questions. Thank you, Tom, for being here as a, well, I don't know, stealth moderator, I think is what I'm going to call this role. Um, <laughs> so here's the session that's happening tomorrow. Beyond the essays, how do you stand out through regular decision? Um, it's basically happening in 23 hours. So Tom's going to talk about how your regular decision app might be different from early applications. What is, you know, what, what are those things that are actually going to make a difference at the last minute? What about those application components, the short questions, the videos? How do you actually demonstrate interest to which school should you do it? And all about applicant portals and, you know, how to manage all those things. So I'll put that in the chat. We'd love to see you all there. And then separate from that, I've, I've shared a few of these resources Know that all the resources are going to be in a big follow-up email and it's going to be just like all the things. So for those of you who are frantically taking notes, great, awesome. And also they're going to, we're going to be sending them to you. So you can look forward to that. But some of the ones that I want to ping for y'all are, you know, we've got some international students on the call and you're probably like, how much does this apply to me? We've got some awesome guides for international students. So if you look at this guide right here or this hub, this is where we've got all of our resources for international students. And there are like five on financial aid, including an epic guide written by two students who've helped a lot of students who are applying. And by international, I mean, you're living outside the U.S., but you're applying into the U.S. Read through those guides. If you haven't looked at that page, I really strongly recommend it. And then separate from that, I'm going to share with you three resources. And I'm just going to throw them into the chat. How to write a scholarship essay. We've got a guide to writing the top 10 most common scholarship prompts. We've got one on just sort of like a, how to apply for scholarships. It's, it's got some of the stuff that Amanda has been saying. And then we've got something on uh, that, that goes into some of the stuff that Amanda shared in our paying for college guide. And this is essentially the Epic guide that Amanda put together and it's beautiful and it's all the things. And I'll just put that in the, in the chat as well. So those are the three links coming to you right now. Um, Amanda, is it cool if I just like lob to you some questions and we just go? Bring them on. <laughs> all right, sweet. All right. If I don't know the answer, no, y'all, I'll say I don't know the answer. And then I will write it down and frantically like go find out the answer. Cause that's what I love about my job is I'm always learning something new. So bring it on. 
All right, here we go. Um, so I'm going to go early and then I'm going to jump around. How do you how do you know if a scholarship, how do you vet a scholarship for a scam? How do you know if a scholar is, are there any sort of telltale signs that a scholarship? Yes. Makes? Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you asked. Okay. Uh, if they want you to pay money, don't, don't do that. Like, cause if I get, you know, how many people are on this call? There's 300 of us. If I get you all to chip in, you know, $10 and I'm offering a thousand dollar scholarship. Yeah. Okay. I've made money. So like, don't, don't, don't pay for scholarships. Don't give out personal information. Scholarships like should not be asking for your social security number. <laughs> like don't, don't give away that information. If you, if it, if it feels scammy, like take, go to your high school counselor and like, get a gut check with them if you if it's really enticing before doing anything but you should not give out personal information or pay someone's asking here what what does a perfect psat score mean for a junior as it you know as it relates to scholarships and admissions and you know does it matter do who cares do colleges care so you should be if you got a perfect psat score well done um what you should be looking into is something called the national merit scholarship um national merit scholars um and they have a whole website and you can select schools. It's something that your high school counselor should be helping you with of like, they, they should get notifications and like be like, okay, your kid's been selected and you go through the process and you do the application and whatnot. Um, you can also look in to see uh, which institutions award aid to national merit scholars. So that's how that would fit in. In terms of like more generally, sure. You could put it on your resume as like a bragging point on the side. That's fine. You can make that flex, but <laughs> I think, I think other than that, I don't, I don't know that there's like a specific one. So it's either institutional or national merit, which is tied to institutions. Amanda, does it still make sense to apply to scholarships when a student's hoping to get into schools that are committed to meeting a hundred percent of demonstrated need? Ooh, great question. Okay. So this is what happened to me. So um, I got into a school that meet, meets a hundred percent demonstrated need Ooh. and I got a local scholarship for $15,000 and I took it with me and they said, that's cute. And then they decreased my institutional aid and stuck that money in. I was like, well, that didn't help me at all. So the an to answer your question is, um, if, if you get into a school that's meeting hundred percent of need, um, ask them about their scholarship stacking policy. If they're going to do that, if they're going to substitute, you know, that outside scholarship money for their own money, most of the time, what colleges will do is take that money and first eliminate any loans that you're offered. That's most often what happens is if colleges are meeting 100% of need with loans, that $5,500 loan will go away first. So it's still saving you money. And then after that, it's a question of, are they allowing that money to meet whatever your CSS profile said you could afford? And that's an individual college by college question. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you still apply. Can you reapply to the same college multiple times for a scholarship? And let's just broaden that to like, can you reapply for certain scholarships? Or I should ask a less yes or no question, but like what scholarships can you reapply for and which ones can you not reapply for? Maybe that's a broader right. version. Yeah, great question. So uh, private online scholarships, usually you can apply as many times as you want, as long as you still meet the eligibility criteria with timing. Like if it says you have to be a high school senior, you have to be a high school senior. Um, and then- in terms of local scholarships, yeah, some, I've seen the rare one that does allow for reapplication. Like, you know, if you, you know, were awarded our scholarship and you did well, you can reapply, but they usually state that really clearly if that applies to them. More often than not, it's, it's a, it's a one-shot deal, um, especially if it's targeted at seniors in high school. That's how those work. But if they're more open generally to just college students, sure, go for it, reapply. That's totally fine. One's through a college though, I don't know. Like, I think potentially, like if there's like a physics department scholarship you wanted to go for or something like that. Sure. Do you advise, it says, to apply for scholarships, even though my senior decided to go to community college uh, and is transferring after the first two years? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the community colleges offer scholarships, one, um, their colleges. And then two, is um, if your students in community college and going to transfer, look into Phi Beta Kappa, which is the honor society. Uh, a lot of transfer students find that when they land on the other side, one of the transfer scholarships is offered is for students who are affiliated with Phi Beta Kappa. And some colleges have scholarships that are just for transfer students. Like I'm thinking of UNC Charlotte, which admits just as many transfers as freshmen every year. So like there can be, the college should have a section dedicated to transfers and like financial aid available for transfers, including scholarships. So just reach out to the college directly. 
Someone asked, I'm going to, I'm going to actually take these. There's one and a half questions. The one the, here's the half one, because it's such a quick answer. Do you offer types of webinars, like how to stand out for regular admission, early admission in the spring or summer for kids who are applying then? And the answer is absolutely stay on the email list. We'll send you lots. We're, we're, we're sharing probably we're doing like one or two webinars a month and, um, and sometimes more, and we've got stuff for students and parents and we've got stuff for counselors. So absolutely. And welcome to the CEG verse. Um, and, uh, someone's asking, can you say a little bit more about some of the prompts and, and writing the essays? And I, I mentioned this briefly, but I just want to flag it for students who might be wondering, there's this epic guide. Essentially, I reached out to, um, to going Mary and we did a little, you know, analysis of what are the most common scholarship essay prompts. So you might've heard me mention it, but like, check this out. If you're writing a prompt that ha they're asking something like, tell us about you, or why do you want to study this particular thing? Or how have you contributed to your community? Or how will this scholarship help you? Or why do you deserve this scholarship? Like these are some of the most common ones. Like what are your academic and career goals? And this guide. So the guy that I created it for, he was like, he wanted, it was going to go out on another website. And it was so, look at this. This is how long it is. It's, it's, it's like there are 10 different examples and it's so much stuff that he was like, oh, that's actually too long. So it was too comprehensive for the other website. And so we're like, oh, great. We'll just put it on our website there. So for those of you who have questions about scholarship essays, hopefully the answer to your question is, is right there. All right. Going back down to our list. Here's another one. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. How do you talked about this a little bit, but maybe you can retouch on it. How do pri generally speaking, how do private colleges versus publics differ in terms of the scholarship availability and how they dole out money? Oh, great question. So public institutions typically uh, are more limited in scholarships. Um, they may have they have them and uh, and um, they can give them out, but um, it depends more on what the state does. So. For example, if you live in Florida, you know about Bright Futures. If you live in Georgia, you know about Hope. If you live in Tennessee, you know about Hope um, or South Carolina Palmetto. Like North Carolina has need-based aid. So it, it could be tied to that. So not as much at public institutions. I think, you know, in three years that I was in a public high school with a senior uh, class of about 400, I had maybe five students that I knew of who got scholarships to public institutions in North Carolina. So again, it could depend on your state because um, we don't have those set things. But if your state has a set, like, you know, you have this GPA, this test score, great. That's fantastic. Private institutions. Um, there's a lot more money. Like I said earlier, the, the average tuition discount is like 52%. So what that means is, especially for less selective private institutions, the people who are paying that, that I, I like how um, one author um, <laughs> wrote this. Uh, he said the, the folks who are paying that level of tuition are writing on, you know, tear stained checks because they're just so happy their kids going to college. Like that's who's <laughs> paying that that level. Everybody else, you know, with academic merit or or some sort of ath uh, athletics, they're getting some sort of scholarship to bring it down to closer to what in-state tuition would be. So uh, a, a private institution's much more variable when it comes to scholarships. Not always the case. Like if you're talking like, oh, I'm going to get a scholarship at MIT. Like it's okay. That's, that's a little different. They play by, by different rules, but less selective private institutions, places that are admitting 40 plus percent of applicants, you could see more. Here's a when question. Someone's, and this might be a quick one, is applying for scholarships uh, for all high school students worth it? Or should you wait till senior year? I think someone's asking, can you apply for scholarships in sophomore year, junior year? Or is this mostly a 12th grade thing? It's mostly 12th grade, but what I would strive, if you're on here and you have underclassmen, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Yes, um, I'm glad you're here. What you should know, what I would tell you is two things. One is you need to pay attention to an entirely different webinar we do about how to identify colleges that, you know, will love you and meet your financial need and get a financially fit list. So that's one. And two would be with regards to scholarships and applying for them. Um, I would say you should absolutely go ahead and put, put your foot on the gas for finding scholarships and banking them in a, in a, you know, some sort of Google document so you can have them. So you're not scrambling to find them. And then it's just heartbreaking. Like I had a student who found uh, a, a, a scholarship for a North Carolina student with learning differences um, who was going into like archeology span or something. It was so specific. And the deadline was two weeks before he found it. And it was heartbreaking. So just finding, putting your folks into finding those scholarships um, and then just having them ready to hit play when you hit senior year and when they open. That would be my advice. Some some colleges, I'm thinking of like SCAD and like Juanita College or something, like they do have scholarships that are open to juniors. 
that like uh you can be nominated for but those are those are rarer mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about a little bit more about stacking a couple of folks have asked about it like mm -hmm. i don't know maybe the question is something like uh, what does it mean? Because some folks maybe miss that section. What does it mean okay. to, to scholarship stack? And uh, you know, in what situations will things will student will scholarship stack, and in what situations will they not stack? Got it. Great question. So, um, you can't. A question I often get asked is related to this: is can I get more in scholarships than what my college costs? So, if my college costs fifty thousand dollars, can I just get eighty thousand dollars in scholarships and get thirty k and bank it? And the answer is cash. no, no, you can't unless unless there's some like it would be a rare circumstance for that to happen. No, you can only have aid up to whatever the cost of attendance is. So, um, if a college offers you aid, um then they they may say like okay you can either have this merit scholarship or you know this talent based scholarship but you can't have both we don't stack them you pick the one that you want to participate in at a student that happened to you last week for for Belmont Abbey like you can you can have that sometimes with outside scholarships coming in they can decrease the amount of institutional aid oh like oh great she's bringing $10,000 in we'll take $10,000 of ours back and put that in spot that's yeah. not ideal um, so colleges can do that. And some will say, no, you brought the money. Like that's just less money you have to pay us or now you don't have to have a loan. So it's just good to know how a college handles outside scholarships. Um, and you know, it say, you know, give them that concrete example and have them give you a concrete answer. If I bring $5,000 in and I've got a $5,500 loan and 8,000 I'm paying out of pocket, what's going to happen? Like what, what's the domino effect look like? Yeah, they'll they'll tell you a lot of times, and you know, just you know, be honest with them as yeah. much as you can. Um, somebody someone asks, I've heard of people getting scholarships with their acceptance offer. Are these students doing something different? Are they doing something to qualify in advance? What in what situations might someone get the money with the actual offer? That is an excellent question. So that's that of the three kinds that I was mentioning with like by automatically or invitation or separate application. These are kids who are getting it automatically. Um, either through a holistic review or because they met certain academic requirements. And a lot of times what's happening there is they get a scholarship notification. You've won a $10,000 scholarship. That's great. But you need to wait and see the actual full award letter, the financial aid package, because a $10,000 scholarship is wonderful. And then you see the cost of attendance is $50,000. So it still costs 40. So like just you know, put it in context. If your whole tuition is $10,000, okay, great. That's wonderful. You've gotten a full ride, but so just, they're not doing anything differently. It's just a matter of the institutions that they've applied to. Um, that's that's all I can say. If someone knows differently or has seen something different, please tell me, because I have not seen anything different than that. Well, we're at time. Amanda, thank you. We I think we answered like 10 questions or something, which is lovely. And I'm so grateful to just spend time with you and to have you as a member of my just like life. Like, I feel like you're on my, I don't know, college admissions, like, a team. So I'm um, thanks for being here <laughs> again and again. And, you know, we got, we got a webinar tomorrow. So if you've got questions, more questions about other parts of the process, please y'all feel free to join. We'd love to have you. We'd love to see you. And if you're a junior, welcome to this process. And we're so glad you're here and early and we've got lots more sessions coming up. So we'll see some of you tomorrow uh, with Tom and Renee. And um, other than that, have a happy holiday. Thanks again, Amanda. Thank you. Have a great night.